this week. We all remember that I'm Mr. Haywood. I'm a race car driver. The unconventional way a teacher is getting his students into math and science. Basically everything that has to do with racing is math and science and engineering related. And uh, you can take the majority of it to the classroom. Hello everyone and welcome to Mountain Lake Journal Extra. I'm Tom Halleck. Our cover story this week is produced in partnership with Need to Know on PBS. We're teaming up to bring you the story of a student teacher who is getting his students into math and science in a rather unusual way. Nick Haywood discovered his love of racing at an early age, first with go-karts and then as a teenager with his family's stock car. And it's that experience at the track that he's now using in the classroom to help turn his students onto science, math, and technology. So what we're gonna do quickly is we're gonna hypothesize about our balloon car. Can anybody tell me what a hypothesis is? Caden? A guess. A guess. What do you think is going to happen the bigger we blow our balloon? The more faster. 23-year-old Nick Haywood is student teaching at the Saranac New York Elementary School. What are you doing, Michaela? Trying to make it fly? He tells Mountain Lake PBS that he discovered his love of teaching by accident. Before I decided I wanted to be a teacher, I started coaching wrestling. And <laughs> when I was around the kids, I mean, it was just great. Our Pee Wee wrestling program is 50 kids in one little room and two coaches trying to coach these kids. After doing that, my coach is like, you know, you should look into teaching. But Nick brings an unusual background to teaching. All right, so we all remember that I'm Mr. Haywood, right? Yeah. And I'm a race car driver. Yeah. The general consensus of racers is, you know, they're motorheads, they can, go out and turn left-hand turns, and that's all there is to it. But uh, there's a lot more to racing than that. Being part of the team has like, made my engineering uh, skills and my science and math skills just peak. What do you got? 17. That's an inch of stagger right there. Well, I, I think the biggest benefit, and I noticed it as I was racing, is that a lot of the stuff that you learn in school makes sense now. Uh, the physics and the math especially are directly related to race cars. To be able to make them fast and competitive, you have to know a lot about math and physics. On a typical Monday night, Nick and his team gather after work at a small garage on Haywood Way in Plattsburgh, New York. My whole crew is all my relatives, basically. If they're not my relatives, they're some of my best friends. Hey, Dad, this one's got some play in it. My father is my crew chief. This is my grandfather's shop. I mean, it's definitely a family affair. Crew members begin the week-long process of measuring, inflating, and remeasuring tire. 85 one Bud and Mike are trying to figure out the circumference of every tire so we know which ones to put where on the car. Because all the cars in Nick's Renegade division use the same frame and motor, the car's performance hinges on small factors, especially the critical measurement called tire stagger. Um, stagger helps the car go around the corner. In our cars, you want the right rear to be about an inch and a half to an inch and three quarters bigger than the left rear. Right front. Right front, 87 and a half. Yep. All set? Yep. Yeah, stagger is basically what short, short track racing is about. If our tire man gets a stagger right, we're going to win. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> For the rest of the evening, the team changes the oil and the air filter and checks all the critical nuts and bolts on the car. That's it? Oh, we're missing one thing. Win. <laughs> we got a lot done. Man. We're getting there. Nick's hometown of Plattsburgh is struggling with a near 11% unemployment rate and pockets of significant poverty. The area's timber, mining, and paper jobs have gradually disappeared. And in 1995, the Air Force closed its base here. Proximity to the Canadian border has helped the region attract multinational industries like Fujitsu and Laurentian Aerospace. But these new high-tech firms require computer-age skills. The North Country economy um, is 
I mean, we're dealing with aerospace, we're dealing with transportation, we're dealing with manufacturing. And so I think science, technology, engineering, and mathematics is critical to what's going on. 86 and a quarter. The rear tires never changed a bet. My son uh, went to RIT, Rochester Institute of Technology, because of racing and for mechanical engineering. Uh, I know there are guys, racers, young guys from here that have gone to work at Jefford Steel, uh, Nova Bus, and I'm sure that uh, when the Laurentian thing comes in, you know, their engineering background will help them get uh, good jobs, good paying jobs. The race team's work begins again on Tuesday with the next phase of measurement and analysis, scaling the car. We put the scales under, one scale under each wheel, and then we'll hook the electric leads up to the digital printout. 2946. So I have to weigh over 154 pounds. The scales reveal the car's cross weight, which, like Stagger, is another critical measurement of the car's handling. Cross weight. 55. Oh, that's high. He's looking at our previous week's cross weight. We were, the car was going well, so we're, we want to get back to this, this place. So he'll look at the weights and say, all right, maybe we have to drop this left rear two pounds. Or Nick sitting can't be over 54%. Yeah, so no cheeseburgers for me. No cheeseburgers for you. Once he gets it to where it's within, you know, a tenth of a percent, we'll say, okay, we'll try it there. But even balancing the car to a tenth of a percent doesn't mean the technical work is over. Every time I'm out there, the track's not the same. It could be the, the rubber's different, the, the temperature's different. We could have got rain during the week. I mean, there's so many different variables. It's fun. Goal for this year is I'd like to be top three in points, get a couple wins. Right now we're fourth, so we're close. Day, the team's first activity at nearby Airborne Speedway is to find a new set of tires that exactly matches the formula Nick's dad came up with on the scale. Mike is measuring the circumference of the tire. We're looking for the smallest tire we can basically find because we want one on the left front to get the most stagger across the front. After installing the new tires, Nick is ready for some practice laps. He's going to run 10 hard laps. Yeah. He's going to come in. We want to see how much it change. As soon as the car comes back into the pits, the team measures each tire's temperature in three locations. 171, 173, 165. That's how we adjust our air pressure. If it's hotter on the sides of the tire, we will go up in air pressure. But if it's hotter in the middle of the tire, we'll have to uh, bring down the air pressure. So basically, when all the temperatures are equal, all the tire is touching the track. It's doing what it's supposed to be doing. OK, check that, because we got to hurry. We're going to run with two inches of stagger? OK, buddy. This Saturday, Nick is driving in four separate races. The racer with the best combined placing takes home the prize money. Come on, let's oh, go. Get a good start. Get up on it. Green flag is out as we kick off another Saturday night of short track racing action at the Big A. First segment, 20 laps the distance. you got to hustle to the front. Remember, it's the low point man at the end of the night that will pick up the $500 overall winner's paycheck. In the first event, Nick comes from the back of the pack to take second place. <laughs> 16th second, guys. That's good. But on his arrival at the pits, he doesn't celebrate. He begins talking tech with his team. It was underneath him. I had my hands on like this, trying to keep it there. Everything's got to be right on, and if you're not right, you're, you know, you could lose the race because you could run out of fuel, or you could be underweight, or the car might not handle great because you didn't put the right uh, air pressure in the tires. Nick heads up for the second race, confident that the car is as well prepped as the team can make it. I'll drive him, Nick. I'll drive him. But a few laps in, he finds himself racing three cars wide. Nick Haywood moving. Look at that move. Three wide down the backstretch. Haywood in the middle. Here comes Joey Roberts. Haywood gets into Bushy. 
Nick Haywood on the top of the bushes. Auto caution on the speedway. Let's go, guys. Come on. One of the cars went off the track a little bit. When you do that, your car basically, you have no control. And I ran right over his front tire and up in the air. When I was looking out my windshield, all I saw was Scott. <laughs> and then somehow went right over the top of him and came back down in my bumper and cover and my fender were flailing in the winds. If it's going to fall off or cause harm or danger anyway, they'll make you go in the pits. Take this one off. Mike just ripped the fenders off. <laughs> we went out without a nose or any per basically protection for the car. After the wreck, the car did not drive well at all. The aerodynamics of the car weren't there. And the, the body is designed to keep the wind from, you know, the car from blocking the wind and it keeps it, it goes over it sleekly, you know, and it's designed to create downforce and keep the nose of the car down. I mean, basically everything that has to do with racing is math and science and engineering related. And uh, you can take the majority of it to the classroom. Today we're going to talk about speed and how how to measure speed and how to determine how fast you're going. So <clears throat> what can you guys tell me about speed? Abby? You have to pay attention like in speed in like race car driving on the turns because you can run into stuff. Right. I had a problem this year when I was racing. A car came in front of me when I was going down the straightaway at 90 miles an hour and my car wrecked and went right over the top of his car so I was going too fast for the condition on, on the racetrack. There's a formula for speed. I'm gonna write it on the board and we'll keep it up here. Speed equals the distance traveled <laughs> divided by the time it took to travel the distance. That one was cool, huh? We went 44 inches. What, two seconds? Get it out, how are you doing? We went to 80 inches. 80, we went to 71. Back on the track, Nick is holding on to his points, but the broken body keeps causing trouble. One of the cars had went off the back stretch and kicked stones into the track, and when he did, one of the stones went through my radiator. What do you need a screwdriver for? The team scrambled to install another radiator in just 15 minutes. So after fixing the radiator, we found out it leaked. So there we were in, you know, kind of a panic to figure out what are we going to do? Because, I mean, I'm fourth place in points. I'm running fourth place at the time of the night and can't really afford to miss the last race. The team's night appeared to be over. The guys beside us, Howard Stoner, one of our competitors, said, well, why don't you guys race my car? Well, he's, he offered us his car. Stoner. He said, what did you break? You fixed, but yeah. He's running for points, I'm not. That's all there is to it. Let's go. OK, get him in. I'll give you the rundown. Reverse, first, second, third. continue to run side by side for position. Branham with a peek to the inside of Robin Wood as they race for the second spot. Great move by Nick Haywood. Branham is on his way on the outside. He'll pass Sean Duquette going into turn number four. Here he comes off the turn number four down the front stretch. Branham is the race leader. It was awesome of those guys to let us use their car. And I mean, they're competitors, so they don't have to do it, but we've been racing with them for years. Well, it was fast. Yeah. Perfect. Oh, they're like neighbors, you know. <laughs> hey, I need some sugar or something like that. But <laughs> Despite the night's mishaps, Nick manages to hold on to his overall standing. We're all, what are we in fourth place in that? Yeah. We were. No, we still are. Good one. For Nick and the other racers at Airborne Speedway, the unique blend of competition, technology, and community has created a non-traditional classroom for young people to learn skills for the 21st century. There are ways to incorporate hands-on learning into um, education, I think, in a way that would make it more exciting and more fun and more interesting for young people and not so uh, diametrically opposed to what they do in their personal lives uh, from the classroom. 
14 inches per second. That was our fastest time of the day. So does anybody have anything to say about observations maybe? Colby? A wheel fall off. You had a wheel fall off. So maybe next time we can figure a different way to hold the wheels on than rubber bands. Instead of rubber bands, you hair ties. Hair ties? <laughs> Going into being a teacher is very intimidating and it's still intimidating. Any, anybody else? In my immediate family, I'm actually the first one to go to college. And my mother and father, they both right out of high school went into the workforce. It'll be fun to be a teacher and I'm proud of it, you know. I mean, it, it'd be great to just make a difference in one of the kids' lives, you know. All right, guys, bye. Thank you. Bye, guys. The story continues online on our STEM webpage where you'll find more about Nick and others who have learned and even discovered their career paths at Airborne. The racetrack is just one of the places to learn about science and engineering. Here at Mountain Lake PBS, we're committed to helping kids explore the world of science, technology, engineering, and math on air, online, and in the community. We're building on our award-winning educational programs with online resources and educational events. Just recently, we invited kids and their parents here to our Mountain Lake PBS studios for a day of fun featuring wild crats on the big screen. There were science, literacy, and craft activities, as well as a visit from Dr. Parker from Butternut Ridge Farm and his therapy donkeys. To continue the learning, Mountain Lake PBS has created a STEM section of our website that you'll find at mountainlake.org. You can find a wealth of activities and lesson plans that you can do at home or in the classroom, as well as great links to other sites.